Learning right from wrong, that is the topic of tonight's byline. It's all good, we're told. Justin Trudeau offered to pay back the money, well, or at least offer to pay back the money, but most of the groups he spoke with, well, they don't want the money. So just move along, says the media party, really, Trudeau's cheerleaders. They don't want to talk about the underlying issue of whether the actions of their messiah are right or wrong. They want to talk about process. Earlier this year, when his hefty speaking fees became public, his cheerleaders declared, hey, look, he's transparent. He, he told us all about his financial dealings. No, he gave selective information to a very friendly reporter. They didn't want to talk about whether it was right for a well-paid public servant to take money from charities that rely on donations and government grants. They didn't want to talk about whether it was right that he was paid $15,000 to speak to a group of federal employees in the Kingston area while he was already on the federal payroll. And they still don't want to talk about whether it's right that he can pocket the well, the same amount from a union group. Unions which are banned from even giving $100 in political donations to politicians or parties. Union donations are banned, so are corporate donations. But Justin Trudeau, well, he can pocket speaking fees from them to make his tushy more cushy. Don't worry about that, they say. He offered to pay the money back and the groups don't want it. That's not the point. Because, I mean, it's funny. Mike Duffy... He paid back the money, but that didn't cut it. Why? Because there's an underlying issue at play. Montreal's mayor, he resigned yesterday, Michael Applebaum. He faces charges of taking $50,000 to help get a project approved. Now, those charges haven't been proven in court, but let's say they are true. I'll bet if you asked the guy who allegedly gave Applebaum the money, well, he wouldn't want it back. Would that make it all okay? The question for Trudeau is, was it right? Did it show good judgment for Trudeau to take hundreds of thousands of dollars in speaking fees while he was an MP? Was it right for him to charge $20,000, almost half of what an average working Canadian takes home in a year, for about, what, half an hour of a speaking engagement? Never mind those questions when you can talk tactics used by the Prime Minister's office. The Conservatives have been trying, in Stephen Harper's absence, to shift attention from the Senate scandal. And the Prime Minister's staff has been relentless in leaking details of his appearances to the media. Do you endorse these activities by your staff? The role that his office played in that story. But Harper wouldn't say if it was appropriate for his own office to spread details of Trudeau's charity gigs. What a shocker. Political staffers handing out documents. I can't believe that. I mean, it's, it's never happened to me. Well, other than all the times it has happened, it's so bad that the media are now being mocked in the Senate. Yes, the Senate over their love of Trudeau. Here is the Prime Minister in Northern Ireland at the wrap-up, at the wrap-up of the G8, and our public broadcaster, so concerned about their, their new little star, asks the question, not about, not about, not about the, uh, uh, the uh, EU, uh, the uh, trade talks, not about the serious situation, not about the serious situation in Syria, not about the dynamics of the G8, which uh, ended up with a very, um, very positive communique on Syria. Oh no, um, Terry Molesky had to ask the Prime Minister about someone insulting their little shiny pony, Justin Trudeau. It is unbelievable that there are seasoned reporters acting, uh, seasoned reporters on Parliament Hill, people I've worked next to for years, acting like a political office passing out details of a negative story on their opponent is somehow new. I'm almost waiting for them to call it American-style politics. Here's the reality. They're saying the Prime Minister's office is leaking this stuff. They're not. They're pointing to documents that Justin Trudeau released to his friendly reporter. That's all. Hey, look, did you see this speech? And by the way, I've had files passed to me by every single party. You get documents, you get a tip, you verify it, and if it is a story, you report on it. I've seen reporters swarm staffers trying to hand out information like this before. When CTV's Bob Feist was reporting on the Mike Duffy emails and $90,000 check, he'd been leaked them. Someone, a political opponent of Duffy, showed or provided those emails to Fife. Were there several stories on how awful it was that someone leaked personal emails? No, it was what was alleged to have happened that was talked about. Here's an even, well, an even more extreme example. When Elections Canada leaked personal banking information on Conservative MP Dean Del Mastro to a reporter, did the media party run to file story after story? 
on the leak of highly personal information. No, of course not. Why? Well, Dean Del Mastro is a conservative. I mean, he probably deserved it. The problem with the Trudeau speaking fees is not a problem of process. It's about doing the right thing. Did he do the right thing in doubling his speaking fees for charities after becoming an MP? An MP paid by the public. Did he do the right thing in charging school boards, government agencies, charities, and other huge uh, other organizations huge fees to talk about issues related to his job? No, he didn't. Did he do the right thing in taking money from a union that's banned from giving donations? The answer again, no. Now, every vote he has as an MP on the labor issue is suspect. Trudeau says he will fight hard to stop or repeal Bill 377. That's the one that will make unions more transparent to their members. Well, is that due to all the union money he's collected from union bosses? It's a valid question, one that even the ethics commissioner is looking into. I oppose Bill 377, the union transparency bill. Mr. Speaker, I can also tell you I've never taken any money from unions before or after being elected MP. To contrast, the Liberal leader took over $100,000 in personal payments from unions, including tens of thousands of dollars as his time as MP. After receiving this money, he is now a vocal opponent of the union transparency bill and his party is opposing it in the Senate. I will be raising this matter with the conflict of interest and ethics commissioner. Can the government comment? Thank you. Now, Trudeau's decision to take thousands of dollars from a union that's banned from donating to politicians should also be investigated by Elections Canada. They should be asking what happened with the money and questioning whether it should be counted as an illegal donation. But we all know that since Justin Trudeau's a liberal, that won't happen. Elections Canada, the supposedly nonpartisan watchdog, well, it only looks into conservatives. Trudeau did the wrong thing here. He shouldn't have taken the money in the first place. He shouldn't offer to refund it. He should actually just refund it and then truly apologize. Instead, he's asking for forgiveness without admitting guilt. You'll often hear that someone's done a mea culpa. It's a Latin phrase meaning my fault. By saying mea culpa, you're admitting fault. You're admitting culpability, and then you're asking for forgiveness. Like in so many other ways, though, Trudeau has the order backwards, and that's the byline. I don't think we should need rules. Maybe, maybe rules are necessary, but I've been in Parliament for 16 years, and... I've never asked for nor, nor received a, a, a fee for, for that. I mean, sometimes people will give me a, a pint of beer or a, um, a local history book or something. You know, typically when MPs go to charity events, they bring their checkbook, not their receipt book. I cannot imagine partisanship aside why any MP who's being paid $160,000 a year would show up at a charity event for schools or seniors or children and take ten or twenty thousand dollars from them. Jason Kenny laying out the moral question in the whole Trudeau issue. Uh, Warren Kinsella joins me now and I told you yesterday Warren had a great column on corruption crossing borders and we've got it posted up at Lily's Pad. Uh, Warren we'll get to the column in a minute but let me start with this Trudeau question. I, I know you've been a Trudeau supporter at times maybe not as hot on him lately but it ties into what your column's all about. Are people doing the right thing? And Trudeau saying, well, I offer to pay it back. To me, that, that's just not the point. You? Well, I think the thing, the reason why we know about his speaking engagements is because he told us. Uh, he was the one who disclosed that he didn't need to. Well, he, he knew that there were access to information requests coming, so he gave them to Glenn McGregor. Well, I don't know if that's the case. All I know is he did it proactively, and then he took a further step and said all MPs, all senators should be subject to an audit by the, the Auditor General and should have their stuff posted online. And the other parties, the Conservatives and the NDP, have opposed it. So I think it's to its credit. But I mean, that what Kenny was saying, you know, it was kind of an interesting little sermon. But my question to Jason would be, well, did you say that to Mike, Wall uh, Mike Duffy? Did you say that to Pamela Wallen? Did you say that to Jacques Demers, who just yesterday said, yes, I've been getting paid by charities for speaking engagements for years. So, Larry I mean, it, Smith. It, it's happening. Larry Smith is refusing to disclose who he did it for. So it's happening all over the place. And the question you asked well, there, there, is a fair question. There's, there, there's Should four we have conservative senators... And, and I would question them as well. Should they be doing that? Well, Who you are and they I speaking both, to you and, and how much are they being paid? But then there's the three Liberal MPs. Mark Garneau I give a pass to all the time. I did last night. I'll do it again. He has had one speaking engagement where he was paid a hefty fee and it had been booked before he even ran in the election. He said he honored that. But Christy Duncan, 
She's like uh, Larry Smith, uh, Liberal MP Christy Duncan. She's saying, I don't need to tell you anything. Um, no, I think you kind of do. Well, but you and I both know, I mean, there's a culture in the city that you are now in. And, uh, you know, does the rest of the country approve of it or not? I guess we're going to find out in the next few days. But um, there's journalists throughout the parliamentary press gallery who get paid to give speeches about politics all the time. What about them? You know, some of the same people who are criticizing Trudeau now get paid to do speeches themselves, and they don't disclose it. Uh, I, hopefully they do with Revenue Canada. But, you know, uh, there's a lot of hypocrisy and double talk going on, and I, I give Trudeau credit. He disclosed this stuff first, and he said, look, if this is such a big deal, I'll pay it back. And uh, nobody's you, offered to take him up on that yet. I, since you mentioned uh, double talk, I have to ask you about this. You've been a war room guy. You've been a backroom guy. You've been a political aide front and center. All this talk about, oh, can you believe the PMO is, is, is passing around documents? First of all, you know, this Grace Foundation letter broke in the New Brunswick uh, Telegraph Journal first. So that didn't start with the PMO. But once it was out there, they started passing around the letter. I've had every party hand me documents. Have you seen this? You guys yeah. should report on it. That happens all the time. But uh, all of a sudden, you've got seasoned reporters acting like uh, the virgin in the whorehouse. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Um, no, I, you're quite right. Political offices, since Jesus was a little fella, uh, have been passing out critical stuff about their opponents. That I agree with you. That is not news. What is the reason why what Miss Meeks did, and I feel very sorry for her, that she did not work in an arrangement with that reporter, the Barry Advance in advance. Um, the reason why this is happening, that's the story. And to me, it's Duffy and Wallen and, and James Bazan and Shelley Glover and Patrick Brazeau and Nigel Wright. The governing party is in a mess of trouble right now in yeah. a way that they haven't been in in years. So understandably, they're trying to change the channel. I, under, I get that, but I don't think it's particularly working. Uh, it's, uh, it's not working with the Barry advance, I'll say that. They, You're right. They Bad burn, comms. They, they burn that kid. She is in the burn unit for the foreseeable future. She, she should have read your book. Now, your column says, <laughs> look, it, you know, Michael Applebaum got arrested. Yeah, they've got this uh, Charbonneau Commission in Quebec, but don't think for a second it's the, it's the most uh, corrupt province. Uh, you go through a bunch of examples. I'll ask you to mention some, but it puts me in mind of an old quote of Sir John A. Macdonald. You'll want a better cabinet, send me better wood. And <laughs> I, you look at all of these controversies, scandals across the country, and you go, are we electing good people? Mm, I, I think most of them still are, or, or a lot of them anyway. But there are enough bad apples that it is spoiling the batch. It is, and it's every party, and it's every part of the country. And I know there were some people, both of us experienced it, saying, oh, there's Quebec. there goes Quebec again when Applebaum was arrested the other day. But, you know, you go all the way out to the left coast, B.C., a raid in the provincial legislature when the Liberals are in power. Before that, the NDP stealing money from charity bingos. <laughs> Alberta, just last week, a municipal official charged uh, in another construction-related thing. Uh, Saskatchewan, the Saskatchewan Progressive Conservative Party literally does not exist anymore because of scandal and kickbacks. And a third of their caucus ended up being charged or going to jail, Manitoba. The legislature in Manitoba literally is a symbol. It was built on kickback. Really? You see, uh, that story I don't know at all. Yeah, it was Duff Roblin's father, uh, was the first Roblin, his premier, built that place on kickbacks and, and backroom deals and had to resign as premier and lost the election afterwards. Here in Ontario, there's the orange stuff, there's e-health, now there's the gas plants thing. So 99 it, it, ways to shred your credibility, is, uh, as Christy Blatchford said. Yeah, well, she knows all about shredding credibility, in my opinion. But anyway, um, it's everywhere, and it is regrettable. And I, I've got to say, and then, of course, we've got the mayor of Toronto, who is in the middle of this alleged crack cocaine thing. Everywhere, at every level of government, there's this sleaze and just muck. And I, I don't know what you're getting, but what I'm getting from average folks is, you know what? I am sick of this. What has gone wrong with our politics in this country? And uh, that's a question worth examining. Well, they're supposed to be the watchdogs on the public purse. The public purse is our money that's given to government for legitimate government functions. They're supposed to be the watchdogs. Now, what I'm hearing is most people feel like they have to watch the watchdogs or they have to set up this bureaucratic 
arm's length infrastructure of overseers to oversee the overseers. And that's not going to work in the end. I think you just need to you need to look for better people that, that have a moral character. I, I want to ask you, as we leave, about a guy, comment on his moral character, if you will. But Bob Ray had a lot of uh, controversy. I, I never heard allegations of kickbacks. He announced he was resigning. Here's a, a clip from Bob Ray earlier today. You may have noticed my occasional absences over the last uh, few weeks. Or worse, uh, you didn't notice my absences in the last few weeks. <laughs> Uh, so I had to tell the caucus today, the leader and I have been talking about this over the last couple of weeks, and uh, I will be stepping down as the Member of Parliament for Toronto Centre in order to continue my work as, uh, uh, as a lawyer and as a mediator uh, and somebody who gets involved in conflict resolution both in Canada and, uh, and elsewhere. Okay, leaving Parliament but not gone from the scene. Your quick thoughts on Bob Ray. Well, you and I, you know, recall, I've never been a huge fan of Bob Ray. I thought he was the wrong man for the permanent leader, leadership, but he kept the Liberal Party, uh, gave it a pulse over the past uh, two terrible years. And the two things that I think Bob Ray, I mean, the reason why I think he could have never been the permanent Liberal leader is because of his NDP past. Yeah. But he, a lot of us forget why he quit the NDP. He quit the NDP because he felt... Number one, it had gone too far to the left, and he was right about that. Yeah. The second reason he quit the NDP is he became concerned about the fact that the NDP had become a repository, the left anyway, for anti-Israel, anti-Zionist sentiment. And he said I could not, he could not abide it anymore and left. And that he deserves the credit, he deserves the thanks of all of us for that, because uh, that, was, that took guts to do that and was the right thing to do. All right, Warren, good talking to you as always. We'll chat again soon. Thanks, Brian.